going on guys? In today's video I'm going to be talking about CT Anubis and how to play every spot. And I have a quick announcement to make. This channel recently hit a thousand subscribers. Which is fucking crazy. And so what I'm going to do for my next video is a Q&A. And so the five most liked comments in the comment section, I'm going to be answering whatever question you guys have. That uh, can be CS related, it can be, it can be any question. Uh, as long as it's the, the top five most liked comments, so make sure you leave a comment down below on what you want me to do. Now to talk about the elephant in the room with Anubis, out of all the seven maps in the pool right now, Anubis is overwhelmingly T-sided. And we can see here by the HLTV statistics, Anubis, compared to all the other maps, has a much higher win percentage for T's. Uh, Inferno is pretty balanced, Vertigo is pretty balanced, but Anubis is a, is a statistical anomaly. And it's the third most played map out of the seven, so we can say this isn't up to chance, and I'll explain why. If you haven't played much of Anubis, I really recommend you just go and play some. Uh, I think the map is really fun, honestly. It's one of the best maps in the pool at the time of making this video, in my opinion. But what you'll notice on CT side is that there's basically nowhere to play, if that makes sense. You play one spot at the start of the round, and then if you get pushed back, it's really hard to find a place to stand or a place to fight from. Which is why the map ends up being T-sided. Because the CTs don't really have good chances to, you know, get a kill, fall back, retake map control. You know, play in an active way to where they can create an advantage. On Anubis, it's very hard to create those advantages. But I'm going to show you ways in every spot that you can at least try to create these advantages and push your win rate further. And this might be a hot take, but I prefer to start CT side on this map versus starting T side. My thought process behind this is if you start CT side and you get off and you know, you maybe get four or five rounds or even three rounds is okay. You play the T side and the T side is so strong that you're able to easily make comebacks happen uh, way more often than they don't. It's, it's really rare that you lose to a T side and then the other team completely farms you on CT side. Uh, because the map is just so T-sided. This is probably another hot take, but I think teams might actually start to pick T-side on CT-sided maps for the same reason as if you're able to get a few rounds on the T-side, the less favored side, and then play the later half of the game where the rounds are more important on the side that has more of an advantage, comebacks are way easier to make happen. So I think that in the future, this will start to happen more, but uh, we'll wait and see, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so I'm going to start from B side, and then go to mid, and then A, and then talk about the op at the very end, like I normally do. So since Anubis is so T-sided, it's warranted that CTs play in different ways and mix it up. Oftentimes, you'll have a player who plays multiple positions, just kind of roaming the map to play gamble setups, or you know, stack a bomb site early or go for an early aggressive play. You can have unorthodox setups work out in your favor in a way on this map that's uh, unique to this map and it doesn't really work on other maps where, you know, you're needed to throw uh, essential utility every round, like on nuke or like on overpass or mirage. Like a, a mirage, the A player is required to throw a molly and a flash over A every round, right? On this map, the requirements aren't so obvious and they're not really map wide. Uh, you know, five players don't have to do something at the start of the round, otherwise they're at a disadvantage, okay? So keep that in mind when I'm talking about all of these positions. So on B, a mistake that I see a lot of beginners make is coming out of spawn here with a smoke out and immediately smoking this area because they're afraid of getting rushed at B. The problem with this smoke is that it doesn't actually really do anything other than block a sight line from the T's to peek you immediately, right? When you're playing Counter-Strike, it's not that you don't want the other person to fight you, right? You can expect somebody to fight you. Throwing the smoke is kind of a scared mindset when playing B. You can't be scared of the other team when you're playing, right? I want you to save your smoke at the start of the round for a more impactful use later, you know? I think that having a smoke on this map later into the round, it'll help you block off more important choke points like E-Box, uh, versus B main, where you don't necessarily need to have the smoke immediately, right? Okay, so as this B long player, your job is to play in a way to where you can try to live as long as possible and play with your teammates, okay? So playing positions like Jail here is very risky, as if you've played this map enough, you know that E-Box tends to be fought for and taken by the T's, right? And when the T's peak here, and look at Jail, it's a pretty easy fight 
for the T's because you're essentially in the open. Even though it doesn't feel like you're in the open from here, like if you put your hand over E-Box and you can't see it, it doesn't really feel like you're in the open. It feels like you're in a, a surprising spot. It's really exposed to E-Box. Uh, and then if you are going to try to fight deep, you know, you're very close to this angle right here. So it can be kind of awkward if you swing. Somebody can maybe see you uh, if you do it slightly wrong. So try to play angles like long, jiggling from long. You can play from here. You can do jump spotting like this. You can play in dark like around this area. This is probably the strongest position for the B long player is to play in dark if your E-Box player isn't playing in here because you're able to actually have a safe cubby that you can chill in if something goes wrong and you're able to throw counter nades very easily so you can throw mollies there you know you can throw random mollies like that you can smoke off a molly here and you know live for a long time and play play angles like this i think that the b long player is is the anchor on this map and they're trying to live for as long as possible in delay so again using your smoke at the start of the round doesn't really delay the t's it, it delays them for maybe five seconds total throughout the whole round think about when a t is running up here and they see this smoke right all this really means is that they're able to you know freely cross over to here and it gives you uncertainty as the ct whether they can be on the right or the left and now it's very hard to hold this position because you can't just get info here right with a flash out or with your knife out right jiggling like this now you have to worry about a guy on this side so if you're jiggling from long and you're the only one holding that somebody could walk up on you and kill you you know because you're not expecting it now you're you're forced to you know worry about both and it makes it really hard so again the number one tip is to not smoke b main at the start of the round okay so as the e-box player there's two ways to get the e-box as fast as possible there's one from this spawn and there's one from this spawn so this spawn is actually the fastest so i'll put up both spawns at the same time so you can see the spawn on this side will actually get to e-box faster if that's what you're looking to do and so as the e-box player when you come here at the start of the round you can hear people running outside of b main and you can hear people running in bottom mid so what i want you to do is to always be listening for information and relay it to your teammates in a way that's actually useful so instead of their mid their b you can hear it sounds like a b rush you know you can hear four people running outside b main or i hear one bottom mid or i hear two bottom mid right you can hear that from here you can hear people throw nades and uh, their footsteps down here so you can relay that information to the rest of your team and so the core principle of playing ebox is to try and stop the other team from taking the control if you can and you can do that with utility and getting nades dropped to you later in the round so typically what you're going to see in a round is the t's will throw this smoke this is the easiest way to do it for most people. They come into this corner and jump throw. And this smoke lands in E-Box. This blocks off sight lines so that the T's can walk up here and get close to you and throw a molly like this or something similar to try and clear out E-Box and force you to leave. So you're going to be facing this smoke a lot. It's pretty uh, pretty standard even for you know low level players will be able to throw this smoke. So what I want you to do is try to delay the other team with a molly. And sometimes the sound in Counter-Strike 2 is uh, kind of bad, so maybe the other team will run up and you don't hear them, and they beat your molly. So what I want you to do is just make sure that nobody is, you know, beating your timing and coming through the smoke. And then by the time that this molly fades, the other team will be maybe right here, and they'll have about 3-4 seconds before this smoke fades. So in that time, you have a smoke still as the e-box player. I want you to re-smoke the e-box. Because what this does is it completely blocks the other team from their plans. And it makes them, you know, have to react to the smoke if they want to keep going. So a lot of times people are going to try to swing when they hear the smoke popping. So just be ready to have fights very quickly. This is a spot where the AUG is very good. Because the AUG one-shot headshots at this distance. Sometimes if you're back here, you'll do 99 in the head. But if you're playing in here with the AUG, you can one-tap headshot. Uh, and it's really strong because now you actually have a more equal fight on a player with an AK versus just having an M4 where they might, you might dink somebody, this happens to be a lot. You dink somebody first, you destroy them with one bullet, but then they have an AK and they shoot you back in the head while you're, you know, you, you didn't get the, the second bullet to connect in the head properly. So think about buying the AUG in this position. And then a lot of the times when you're playing here, you're going to be in this general area a lot. You're going to be playing around this pillar. I call it Yekendar here, just this pillar in general. So you're going to be playing a lot from here. So get used to taking fights. This one's kind of sketchy, but if you have a teammate holding B main, it's okay. So look, I'm exposed like that, but you can play like this and you can, you know, play in front here on an off angle. But a lot of the time you're going to be jiggling here 
looking for fights like this. And again, I'm exposed, so this either needs to be smoked or somebody needs to be holding it. And then if you're truly forced back, you need to make a decision whether you want to run into dark here or play by the pillar. And so sometimes you're just locked into what you're going to end up doing, but you, you have to be confident in playing in this area. This is where you're going to be playing basically every single round is from around here. So just get comfortable and play it a lot. And like I said in the introduction, the reason this map is so T-sided is that the CTs really are just out of options when it's too late to do anything and you can't really go anywhere. So you, you're going to have to end up fighting a lot for your life. And you know, miracles do happen. It, it, it's Counter-Strike, right? Anything can really happen in these rounds and you can pop off and have miracle rounds. But a lot of the times the T's are going to end up victorious if they play properly and trade properly. So you know, just try to have the best chance in the round based on you playing smart and you playing smart with utility and playing in the strongest angles you possibly can. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about mid. The spawn that you take, it really doesn't matter in mid. The spawn timing doesn't really change, and the time that you can get your nades out always beats the T's. So, run like this. And I want you to think about this before you come to mid, not right when you're here. If you're going to smoke mid or molly mid, okay? So, I use this thing right here, this part of the bridge, and you can bounce a smoke like that. And the CS2, the smokes are very forgiving, as you can see, I like kind of missed it. But what this does is it blocks off sight to where the T's don't know if you're going to be peeking bridge behind this smoke right you can peek like this in theory if the other team didn't have a mouse and they couldn't spam the smoke you could be peeking like this right and fighting all these angles uh, at, at any timing so the other team is going to try to spam you and you know maybe uh, maybe break the smoke by throwing a nade here and so what you're doing with this smoke is if the other team wasn't going to rush mid it delays them by a lot because they they basically can't make any progress unless they run through the smoke okay so just be aware of that. And then the reason that you would choose to molly is if you think the other team is on a low buy or the other team has a high chance of running mid on you. So you molly like that in the same way. And then you can nade the molly also if you're if you're really thinking that they're going to glock rush you mid. These are the starting nades generally. While I was editing this video, I forgot to mention that you can molly at the start like this and also get a nade off really quickly and fall back before the other team's able to nade you because this nade will hit anybody trying to wide swing to throw a nade or just wide swing in general. So this nade is good to throw. Okay, so generally when you're playing mid, you have to remember that the T's, if this is smoked, right? It's not very likely that a T is gonna get spammed if they're standing in this general area, you know? So they have the freedom to throw a grenade like this, right? They have the freedom to throw grenades in house at the start of the round. And if you play here at the start, you come, you smoke mid, and you kind of autopilot here. I'd say maybe 50% of the times that I do this in my games, you know, just on autopilot, I'm getting naded down to half HP immediately. Because what I've noticed is that people really like to throw a nade here and um, it just, it destroys people so much that, you know, they don't stop. If one nade is coming, that could mean three nades are coming, right? Especially on a rush. So there are some people will call rush tactic in a pug door, everyone just nades house like this, right? And you just get destroyed. So don't play here early. Uh, unless you think that the other team just never nades mid because you've noticed that over the course of maybe seven or eight rounds into the half. Okay, and then what you have to remember in mid is that you are essentially the second A player because this connection to A, uh, we call it camera, is directly connected to the A site and you can see all of these sight lines, right? You have an M4. You can see all of these sight lines and you're able to help your A teammates basically instantly. What happens on this map is that a lot of the times there won't be very much happening in mid, you know, at the very start of the round. So generally you're going to end up playing towards camera here uh, if you only have one player at A, okay? Now let's say your opper started A. Now he's the second A player and you're responsible for mid and rotating towards B, okay? Uh, hopefully this map on screen helps you uh, see what I'm talking about. If the opper or the third B player is playing around here, right? He can come and give you information and fight like this right and and hold camera from here while you're free to now go to the a site okay i hope that makes sense and then when you come into a you have to look at your radar while you're running over here right to see where your a teammate is if your a teammate is in heaven that means that he doesn't necessarily need you to try to wide swing to help him right because he's playing in a safe position uh you know that's that's unlikely to be killed uh, if he's playing safe right so that means he doesn't want you to just run up here 
and fully just throw your life away because you're, you're gonna go one for one, right? So let's say your teammate is playing here at Fountain, right? And the other team is starting to throw an A execute or he gets contact A. It's really easy to come here and throw a flash in front of your teammate like this. And so as you can see, this nade path, if your teammate's playing here, it's very hard to blind your teammate if you throw a nade on the ground. You can throw it anywhere from here to there right in this huge area and it won't blind him. And this will give your teammate a very easy time to fight people who are full blinded. If the T's are coming out and they're looking at all this and a flash pops right here, there's no way for them to dodge it, right? No one's gonna run in backwards like this. So this flash is super, super strong and you can throw, you know, the remaining nades that you might have. So if you saved your molly, you can throw a molly like this or you can try to throw a molly like this if you have enough time, right? And one of the reasons that at the start of the round, you might not wanna use your smoke because if you throw a smoke like this, it's very, very ballsy to go for this bridge peak, right? Because once you start playing against better players, everybody knows about it and you can spam the left side of the smoke like this, you can spam all like this, and then the people in canal will know that it can come, right? If I threw a better smoke, they'll be staring at it, right? So th the bridge peak is very risky. So a lot of times you're gonna end up saving your smoke. So if a round is quiet, okay, and nothing's really happening, your A teammate might have used this smoke already, and you can just simply come here and re-smoke A main. And by the time that this is happening, generally it'll be around 1 minute 10 seconds to 50 seconds left in the round. And since the smoke lasts for 20 seconds, you're essentially telling the T's that they're going to have to execute at a like very late into the round, and a fake is not going to be as likely. Versus if they were to try to fake execute at 1 minute and 10 seconds, or at you know 1 minute and 20 seconds into the round, it's more likely a fake might be happening, right? Because they have so much time to play with versus if you shut them out until late into the round, they're not able to run back to the other bomb site uh, unless, they, unless they completely turn around and, and knife out, hold W to the other site, um, which you'll know is happening pretty quickly and pretty obviously. If you're playing A, I want you to think about that Fortnite skin that they added into the game recently, that like sick lone wolf, this is cringe, who can survive for as long as possible and play in a way that's extremely chatted okay and what that means is that you're gonna have to have a more advanced utility set to play this site and it's not it's not as simple as just you know basic throwing nades on the ground and stuff so i want you to be able to play in multiple ways to where the other team has no clue where you are all right okay so at the start of the round so if you want to play closer to a main at the start of the round it's always faster with this spawn to go this way versus around the beach. And I'll show both perspectives on screen right now. You'll see that the guy who goes this way is running much faster than the other side. So if you don't want to throw any nades through the windows up here, then I want you to path through camera. And if you want to play close A man, it's really important that you get these timings as good as possible because you can throw nades off the wall like this, off of this wall right here. You can easily bounce nades into this doorway. So what that means is that the other team uh, is going to have to smoke this molly if they want to rush you, right? The, that one to two seconds saved is going to help you a lot because you'll be able to hear that this molly gets put out, okay? And you'll be able to, you know, throw a nade and fall back or just be ready for this rush, right? You can throw a smoke here. You're going to dodge a bunch of flashes. It's going to be hard for the other team to kill you uh, if they're rushing and you're playing close here. You know, you can, you can very easily get two to three kills playing close. But then if you don't want to play an A main at the start, I think that this nade is almost essential because so many people at the start of the round on T side will play in this steps area, right? And, you know, maybe an opper or just a rifler playing here, holding the bridge playing here holding a man so you can nade these people very easily and um i would say you should do this on if you're in a face the pug and people are just getting dunked by this nade over and over again just keep throwing it but i'd say maybe on 50 percent of the rounds you can throw this so i'm looking for this you know harry potter lightning bolt here and i'm putting my crosshair right here to the right of the bottom part and just running forward and jump throwing this nade is just going to destroy anybody who's in this area with the op right it might not get people who are back here but that's okay you're, you're trying to go for general damage on people so that nade is going to do at least 30 damage to anyone standing in this area 40 damage maybe so that puts them in one shot headshot range so your nade had impact if it lands and then you can also throw a molly with the same lineup so you just throw it like this and this molly is really good if 
your teammates want to rush E box, you can simply throw this even without asking. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna find use in this molly because these people who might hold this sight line are gonna get pushed out into the open or forced to not fight them, you know, while they while they run up here and, and peek this area. So this molly and this nade are really, really good. Now, if you don't want to start an A main, but you still want to deny a rush and get early info, when you're pathing through camera, come here into this corner. You see this spec right here on the wall. With my crosshair, I'm aiming right here. And I'm going to do a middle click jump throw. So I'll leave my bind in the description that I use. And you can just put that in an auto exec file and run it and save it to your config. This is a left click throw. This is a right click throw. And this is a middle click. It's right in the center. And you're just going to jump throw like that. And this molly will be at the perfect time to where if the other team wants to run through it, they're going to take 70 damage if they don't smoke it, 80 damage. They might even full die because it gets gets here about one to two seconds before the other team approaches here. So when they're about here, it'll pop. So they have to take a bunch of damage or smoke the molly. And so you're going to hear it playing in here. You're going to hear the hiss from the smoke because what else could it be right at that time of the round? And you know that it's going to be an A rush. So, you know, you can you can flash like this. If you were playing in sight, you can smoke easily then play around here. Then, like I said, when I was talking about mid, angles like this as the A player are very strong because you can play here jiggle, right? You can play here and jiggle while your other teammate is holding camera from here, right? Or if they're holding camera from here and you're able to get nades thrown for you very easily. Uh, you can play very safe in this area. So like, let's say you're playing here, you spot somebody, you can throw a smoke like this just off this wall very simply and it completely blocks main coming out and so you can safely get away if you wanted to um, even if the other team mollies you right and then get kills on people trying to walk through the smoke you can play from cake here too where it's a similar idea where you're trying to look for contact and then try to drop nades to protect yourself so you can throw a smoke like that you can throw random smokes in the site you know, to try to live around right and play play like a total rat you know but a lot of the times, people are going to walk a main on you, and it's going to be hard to deal with it if it's just you playing here. So what I want you to do is I want you to call your opper to come and hold a main with you, okay? And so what this means is your opper, you can ping a spot for him if he doesn't know how to play the game. You can ping a spot and tell him to hold from right here, right? He can get a shot off and run back while you're playing here, for example, or in here. Or even back here right because the op is so strong at killing these dry fights right the other team doesn't flash and they're just walking in it's bang it's a very very easy kill your opera can play here right and you can be holding mid your opera can be playing here holding mid for you there's lots of spots that the op can play and have a lot of impact and totally shut down the bomb site so always call your opera to help you if you're feeling stuck in in that game that you're playing okay so on anubis the op is the hidden weapon that will win you free rounds and it's the only saving grace really for the CTs on this map. Right, Five rifles doesn't really work like it does on Vertigo. You must have an op playing in a rotational manner where they're always unpredictable and, and the other team has no idea where you're going with the op, okay? So if you have this spawn with the op and the other team doesn't smoke e-box, I think that it's very good to play an e-box with the op. And if they do smoke e-box, it's really easy to tell your teammate to break the smoke for you so they can just like they can throw like any nade and it'll break the smoke and i'll try to show you with just myself it might be hard here you know it's way easier with the teammate throwing this for you right because you don't have to do all this movement you can just kind of scope up and wait for your teammate to break it and then shoot and leave but breaking the smoke and peeking can be very strong as a lot of the times people aren't going to expect the the smoke break at any timing and then the op already posted on you right so you can do that with the op. If you start with the op in temple, you can shut down people who like to peek B main. You know, kind of stupidly, they just wide swing and peek it. At the start of the round, you can easily kill them from here or from here. I think Manessi plays this angle a lot, right? At the start of rounds where he wants to play more passive but shut down somebody lurking. You can easily do that on somebody walking here. When you come with the op in mid, like I said in the part where I was talking about the mid player, you have to remember that if you play this angle, it's very easy to get nade stacked. Okay, because if you play here, right, and you're crouched and you're only looking at this sliver, you can you can look for this table, right, to imagine where I'm looking. And the other team comes here and tries to nade you, right, 
If I throw the nade from here, you're not going to be able to see me past this table, right? I can only see with the op this angle. I'm going to be here nade stacking you. You know, this is this is very risky to play with the op in this angle. Uh, I like to play with the op here because it's harder for the other team to nade you. They can rush up on the left side, right? But typically there'll be somebody here so you can get a kill like this and fall off. What generally happens in the round is that the mid player stays mid after the op shoots and then the op starts to rotate to wherever the op is needed. So you have to think about your mid player when you're rotating and communicate to him what you're going to do. Okay, so if you're going to go to A with the op, like let's say let's say there's um you know your your A teammate needs help or he's kind of playing aggressive, right? And he wants you to come play a setup with him. You have to tell your mid teammate to fall back and play as the B rotator. But if your mid teammate wants to stay mid play around in this area that's okay you can just go to B right and play from temple but you're going to have to rotate back to mid eventually right if the other team comes to comes and does an A split and so just remember that you might get smoked off in this area that's very common for the T's to throw a smoke like this so you have to be wary of the skill level of your opponent and how they might react to you finding out where you are right because this smoke if you're in if you're in here and you have an op, you're you're shut down. Like, how are, what you're gonna do? Spam this, right? You, it's not it's not really possible. So just remember, you, you're responsible mainly for being the rotator between A and B as the op on this map. It's kind of unique with the op. I can't really think besides maybe nuke. Typically, the opper isn't the rotator, but that ends up being the case in a lot of rounds, um, especially in face it pugs with the op. All right, so if you got to this point in the video, it probably means that you're very serious about improving in Counter Strike. And I really recommend that you watch some of my other videos on the other maps because I go into similar depth about the basics in every single spot that there is on the CT side. I'm planning on doing deep dives into different CT spots specifically and making longer videos on specific spots and doing T side guides in the future. So make sure you're subscribed for when I put those out. And yeah, that's all I've got for you guys today. Peace.